<laughs> okay, I'm going to introduce Lou Ann Duncanson, who's a friend of mine and the president of the Jacksonville Watercolor Society. She paints outdoors a lot, and her paintings are so beautiful. So we're really lucky to have her here to talk to us, show us some of her work, and kind of show us how it's done. So um, are you ready to start, Luann? OK, so um, I thought I would start with a little bit of what the differences are in watercolor painting in urban sketching versus watercolor painting in the studio or um, plein air because I do all three and I have different approaches to each one. And I thought first I would talk about the palettes and what I generally take with me to urban sketch and how different it is from my normal palette. And this is my studio palette, you know, and I would love to be able to take all those colors urban sketching, but <laughs> that just is not going to work. <clears throat> I occasionally take this in plain air because I carry everything in a wagon then, but for urban sketching, this is not going to work, although it's a great palette. I love it so much. Um, I do have a bunch of these palettes for urban sketching and we've all seen them and I'm sure we all have some of these and I have about three or four of them. Um, I have the Derwent one, this one. Um, but for some reason, I find that there's always something missing in them. You know, it's like there's a color that I have to have that's not there. Like I had one that described itself as a plain air one that had no blue and that just freaked me out. Um, so what I normally do now is just use one of these. You know, generally it's the same 12 pans, just like the smaller ones have. It is a little bit larger, but it's not too hard to carry around. Um, and I generally take with me the same colors that I have on here now, but I'll also just throw in some random tubes of watercolor, just like if, oh, if I know I'm going somewhere that has a lot of flowers, I might add some more pinks or oranges or whatever. But what I like to, excuse me, what I like to use on my palette is the burnt sienna ultramarine blue. And I keep them next to each other because that's generally my gray. Um, and I have cerulean for skies. I like um, buff titanium, just because I just think it's a nice neutral color for buildings or streets. Um, and it makes some nice shades when you mix it with other colors. This is indigo and sepia. And it's hard to see the color there, but indigo is a really, really deep blue and sepia is a really dark brown. Um, together, they make a really nice dark, dark shadow. So even though Burnt Sienna and Ultra I use for shadows, these would be my real darks. Um, and I, I have two colors of green, my Cad Red. I like Quinn Rose, um, Hansa Yellow, and I take some white. I don't really use white all that much unless I have like um, a mask, like a, a sailboat mask or lines or window panes or something like that. That's the only time I will use white. I don't mix it with my other colors. Um, so, and I know there's a lot, you can even be much more portable with watercolor. You can get the ones that just, um, strap onto your wrist and you know basically that's enough too so it just all depends on how complicated you want it you want it to be um, I use or for urban sketching I usually take just two brushes I'll take a um, what is this a six I think a four or six um, this is a black velvet silver black velvet has a nice point and a number 10. 
this one. And that's generally all I need because I work pretty small. Um, this is, where do I have them? Um, for instance, this is one of my sketchbooks. Um, it's important to um, make sure you have watercolor paper. You know, don't use a sketchbook that's not meant for watercolor. It should have some tooth to it. Um, this is a Caslon and a Canson, I mean. And so I usually get this just over and over and over again because I think it, I think it works fine. Um, and I just fill them up and I go on to the next one. Um, some of these, like this one. Um, this was done in Spain, and this is when I took one of those little palettes that didn't have a blue. So I know any of these drawings, there's no blue, which made me crazy because it was the bluest skies you ever saw. So, you know, um, so, like I said, this is, and you know, a lot of you will recognize these because these are these were all done with the Urban Sketch Group. Um, These were Savannah, where I had a great trip with Jamie. We had a lot of fun. I'm sorry, I'm gonna miss the next one. I hope you have it in the fall again. Um, and so there's a few more of my, this is another very small sketchbook. And this was done as I was traveling. So, um, a lot of nice memories of places and sometimes I'll just put it with other things. Um, you know, again, meals. Sometimes I'll just do a quick, quick one like this or this. So, and this is actually the one we're gonna do today that I did when I was there, very quick, when we were sitting at a table, you know, this one is going to probably have a little bit more detail, more going, going on. Um, let's see. So, so when you look at the at the photo that we're going to to work on today, I think we're going to try to do the sketch in. 20 minutes and then um, another 20 or so for the washes. So when you look at that photo, um, when you're working in watercolor, the first thing that I think you should do is look for your darkest darks and your lightest lights and make sure that, you know, plan ahead, make sure that you're, you're going to leave your whites. You know, when you start to paint, make sure that you're not covering the whole thing. And of course, white is not always white, but as you look at this, you can see what is definitely the, the whitest parts of this. Um, I find that sometimes with watercolor, if it's too much of just mid-tones, it just doesn't pop. So it's very, you know, I think it's important to look for the dark darks and the light lights and, and play on that. Um, I would probably try not to use black and try to use one of the, the combinations of your colors for black. There's not a lot of black in, in this photo, but once we get there. Um, another difference between studio watercolor and obviously urban sketching is we have less time to paint. So, you know, once we start painting, you're not gonna worry about too much staying in the lines of whatever you've sketched. If, you, if you've if you used ink, I don't worry about staying in the lines because you just can't usually in the situation. Um, you're gonna use fewer colors and fewer brushes and my favorite part of urban sketching is that you're you're so much less stressed to make a finished painting. It doesn't matter. It's just a page in a book and you can go on to the next one. So it's easy and fun to just keep experimenting with that. Um, 
a story about that is I had a painting in the Florida Watercolor Society show. There was a bungalow here in Avondale with a tree, with one of the big oak trees. And um, the judge of the show was doing a critique of all the paintings. So I, of course, logged on to hear it because he was going through every single painting and he got to mine and he said, yeah, it's well done, but it's a house, it's real estate, you know, move on next, it's boring. <coughs> so, you know, to me, it's like boring, it's a, you know, but that's why I love urban sketching because yes, we can, we can um, do a sketch of a house. Nobody's going to tell you it's boring or a building or anything. You don't have to worry so much about the subject matter because you're, you're doing what's in front of you. So, um, yeah. Okay. <coughs> the other thing I would do when I looked at a photo like this that we're going to be doing is um, don't be too worried about painting realistic colors on here. Like really look for places that you can bring in some unusual colors into it. Um, I love this photo because we can we can get a little creative with the with the flowers and things like that. Um, and you know, some we don't have to. I love when artists do the watercolor washes that are not even the whole picture. Like there's a few of them, um, Simone Ridyard, I think her name is, that just does like a little splash of watercolor. And to me, that's that's just super cool. Um, I would say that some of the most common mistakes when you're doing a watercolor, um, the washes is over mixing your colors. Like really try not to mix more than two colors together. If you start to get to three, you're gonna to start to just produce mud. So it's it's probably better to just keep it to a minimum. Try not to overwork anything. Don't, you know, doesn't matter if things are running together. It's, that's what watercolor is all about. Um, and like I said, another common mistake is not enough contrast and just remember to not fiddle with it. Just say it's done and it's done and just move on. Does anybody have any questions on any of that? No. no. Okay. I have a question, Luann. Mm -hmm. Luann, can you tell yeah. me what, what kind of yellow that was again? I missed that. Oh, that's Hansa. Hansa. Okay. Yeah. It looks a little dull. It's kind of, it's a little bit like it's warmer than lemon, which seems like it goes to the cooler side of yellow. Can you name your greens that you used? You said there were three greens. Oh, I'm sorry. I usually just put sap and hookers. Thank you. Um, Do you prefer a certain brand? Luann? I like M. Graham with the honey in it. Um, but depending on whether they make the color I'm looking for, I'll use just anything that's that's a professional grade um, watercolor. Okay. Luann, what, what pen are you using um, to oh, make your marks? I'm going to use this. Oh, sorry. Can you see it? Nope. It's, just called, it's a foodie point. And I have two okay. of them, same exact ones. Guess why? Because I bought this one, right away lost it, bought another one, found this one. <laughs> so the good thing is I carry two because they can be a little temperamental. So if one starts acting up, I have, I have the other one. I almost use these exclusively. I just, I love them. It's just, you can get the fine line or you can get the thick line. What Although is the name of fountain pens? Those are fountain pens, right? Yes. What kind of ink do you put in them? Um, the Noodlers waterproof. Noodlers, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Just I'm curious. Sure, Thanks. I'm not sure what brand the pen is, though. Chris might know. Is he here? Could you spell foodie? F U D E. Okay. And foodie is actually the 
what this tip is called. You know, there's other pens that'll take a foodie point. So, you know what, as long as you have this point, it'll do the thin line or the really thick line. And is yeah, that only it. online yeah. that you get the pens? I got this on Amazon. Yeah, Mine, it, mine says sailor on the side. Yeah, it's a Confucius, uh, Luann. It's a it's a Duke Confucius. Okay. Yeah, it, I thought awesome. you would know. They're, they're about thirty bucks online. Yeah. Sun, and it's a great pen. It's it's uh you know we've talked about it. It's a it's an ink consumer. It'll really drink the ink. Yeah. It, they're a lot of fun to use. Yeah. Um, Newbert makes a um, really dark ink. Do you know which which one it is? Uh, I can show it to you. It just uh, looks like this. Just says Noodler's Bulletproof Polar Black. There it is, Polar Black. Yeah. Yep. Um, so if we want to get started with the, with the drawing and um, Hannah suggested that as we sketch, I'll tell you a little bit about how I got into this. Um, does anybody have any questions about the drawing itself? I mean, I'm going to simplify this and, you know, there's a lot of people in here. You don't have to draw all these people. Um, I think at the one I did before, I mean, the lady that's kind of sitting by herself, I, I did not draw her. I simplified the umbrellas. Um, so, you know, just go for it. You know, like try to get the mood of the place without really trying to really get hung up in all the details of it. Um, this is actually one of the white villages in Andalusia. So every building in this village was white. The umbrellas are white. You don't have to make those umbrellas white if you think that they would look better in another color. Who's going to know? You know, it, it's that's totally up to you. But I'm just going to start um, with a pen and just go for it and see what happens. Is somebody going to time us? I can check the time. Yes, I can time. Okay. 20 minutes for this one, right? Yeah, I think. I mean, we want to be done by like, definitely by nine. It's yes. Ten okay. Eight, so yeah. So. Okay. okay. I will let um, I'm not drawing in a sketchbook because it kept falling off my drawing table. So I'm, I did outline my usual size of my sketchbook and I'm just drawing on a piece of watercolor paper right now. So I'm gonna start at the roof line. You have waterproof ink in your pen, right, Luann? Yes. Okay, so if we don't have waterproof ink. Then I would use pencil. Use a pencil, right? And then you yeah, can I would, yeah. Could we see the picture as well? What you're. What oh. You're I don't know if start. I can. So, what I did, I have a suggestion. Yeah. I, I, I went to it just another, I went to a tablet or your phone and go to Facebook and they have it on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then okay. you'll just have to have two things going on. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I'm actually looking at mine on my laptop as I'm doing this, so. And remember that, you know, since we're using washes, it's going to cover up some of the some of your mistakes, if there are any, you know, you're going to, to um, have a little leeway and correct some of this as we go. 
is huge. So I spent my career in interior design. So okay. that's how I sort of got into sketching um, because it was before CAD was around and every drawing had to be hand drawn. So um, that's really where I learned to draw. And also um, a lot of color theory type things. I learned, I got urban sketching um, in 2014 because my, my husband and I decided to be nomads for a year and take a trip around the world. And all we had was carry on luggage. We had our two rollies and that was it. So I, by that time I was <coughs> back to painting again. So I had to find a way to be able to keep painting without all the stuff. And I didn't know at the time that really what I was doing was urban sketching, but I didn't really realize that that's, I didn't know that was even a thing, but you know, I just pared down what I was bringing with me. So I really was urban sketching that whole year. Well, your work is very beautiful. Oh, thank you. Really pretty. Now, if I would have done it today and done that whole trip again, I would have taken this, the note, the um, sketchbooks, but I didn't even take sketchbooks. I just took like uh, a pad of watercolor paper. So I have a lot of loose drawings from that time period, but nothing in like an urban sketchbook. Is everybody sketching along? Yes. Okay. Yes, from here. The washes are more fun, I think. This was, this picture was taken on the way to somewhere we were going, um, another village. And these were all um, German tourists that we had passed on the road that were all on their bikes. This was like nine o'clock on a Sunday morning, maybe. And they were all having beers here. <laughs> it was really early in the morning. Everybody, I'm going to say good night. I can't stay up anymore. 
Okay. How about better? better. How better? Okay, so. Watch us on YouTube. I didn't know she was sick. Is it allergies? <laughs> we really got bad flu. Uh, Ten minutes. Ten minutes? Yes. Yikes. Has anybody done a, um, a painting with Vlad? Has anybody painted with Vlad? Yeah, he's, uh, oh. he's one of my favorites. Me too. It's absolutely amazing. I would definitely recommend anybody to, to do a, a paint with Vlad. Now, if you just put that in um, your search, I'm sure he will come up. He's really a great watercolorist and his paint alongs are so fun. Um, and it's three hours, you know, you do a painting in three hours and his, his little catchphrase is, you have to paint like you're gonna miss the train. You know, you just, <laughs> you just start and you just keep going. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. And he's, he's, quite, he's quite the personality too. Yeah, he's, yeah. Um, it's V-L-A-D. Um, I don't know how to pronounce or spell his last name, but I know if you just put 
paint with Vlad, he will come up. Yeah, Yevelsevich, something like that. Yeah, it's Y E L. It's Yelisev. Y E L I S E V. Yeah, that's no itch on it. Yeah, he's he's amazing. I think he's one of the one of the world's best watercolorists, and just his whole approach is fabulous. I agree. Yeah, thank you. Workshop. Take take a workshop with him. Um, it'll change your life. And you know when on his Zoom paint outs, they're only thirty dollars. I mean, yep. you know, it's not a big uh, financial commitment to do them. Well, have to do them. I'm kind of thinking about him as I do these people because um, it just reminds me, you know, he has a way of, of dealing with all the details that are just amazing that, or maybe not dealing with all the details <laughs> and just letting them be. Just a sketch. Yeah. You know, so far I have three umbrellas and I, I think that's probably about all I'm gonna I'm gonna do. Sometimes it's good to put a bush where there are no bushes either if you don't want to deal with something. <laughs> For more, for more minutes. Okay. I was just thinking, I think I'm ready to stop anyway.
Luann, can I ask you a question? Sure. So in the beginning, you talked about picking up the lightest lights and the darkest darks. So as you're, as you're drawing this with your pen, so the darkest darks look like, I mean, they're the shadows and the windows and the doors and then like some of those kind of pieces. So when you go back, because um, where I am, I can't see your photographs. So I've just been enjoying watching you draw. But um, so will you go back and mark or do something to indicate where the lightest lights are or will you just know as you're referring to your photograph? Because I'm thinking about too, you know, being outside and the light's going to change and all that kind of stuff. Just kind of, I mean, maybe that's just intuitive. You just kind of remember or know or whatever. Well, you know, that's, that's, one of the hard parts of watercolor because you really want to leave some whites because that goes back to like um when i said if it's too much like a mid-tone then it just kind of looks lifeless mm -hmm. so um that's this is a little bit of a challenge because it is so white so you know but usually just you know, when you're urban sketching, I would say you just kind of have to like wing it, you know, just save some whites. Okay. Because I usually kind of go crazy with washes and that's one of the things I forget. And, and I and I know, I mean, sometimes in the studio or if I'm doing something I'll use, depends on what it is, I'll use resist or frisket or something like that. But I don't think plein air, that's really much of an option. No, generally not. Okay, thanks. Yes. Do you take photographs also, Luann? Um, I usually take a photograph when I first start sketching, um, since obviously the light changes and it just kind of gives you a uh, and I more of an idea of the layout. You know, it's kind of um, limits your your view. Mm -hmm. let your brain adjust to it instead of seeing everything outside yeah would you take it back to the studio and finish it up if you don't finish it I don't usually do that with watercolor okay I mean, I might take another stab at it at some point, but usually I'll just leave it what it is, especially with urban sketching. Mm -hmm. This one would be a great one to see if you're get your hundred people in. Yes, exactly. <laughs> are we done, Hannah? Yes, we are just done, 20 minutes. Okay, so. Now we're ready for our washes. Um, I like to do the sky first, 
not everybody does. You know, some people just like to to put one in afterwards. Um, but I'm going to do a little bit of the sky. I mean, it's very washed out here. It's it's obviously sort of an overcast, hot okay. summer morning, but. Um, also, I usually have yellow ochre in this 12 pan, but I see I don't have it. I like to, you know, when the sky is like that, you know, I see a little bit of um, yellow ochre down low. It's, it's a nice way to kind of just neutral out your blue. So I'm going to go in with some of that and just, you know, I don't, and again, I don't really care that I'm, you know, covering some of this and I'm probably not even going to put the whole sky in. I'm just going to leave it with some texture. You can see it there, I think. You know, the roof is going to be a little bit darker, so I'm not trying too hard to be too, too neat about it. Um, and then I'll go in with a little cerulean. You know, you can use whatever blue you like to use. I mean, that's the beauty of it. And even in the sky, I'm kind of, I'm leaving some whites in here. This is a rough watercolor paper, which I, I normally, I normally like to use rough. Get a little bit more texture. So that's my sky. I mean, I'm done with it. It's, it is what it is, nothing fancy. Is everybody painting? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Still drawing. Still drawing. Okay. That's all right. That's okay. Let's start somewhere. Um, I'm going to use cerulean for um, some of these. No, maybe not. Let me see if. Uh... So, can I ask a question? Of course. No. You were talking about, are we still drawing or whatever, or painting? So I drew in pencil. Mm -hmm. Should I go over it with an ink pen, then do the, that's what I was doing, was going over it with an ink pen. Um, well, what, yeah. what kind of ink pen, is it waterproof? I have no idea. Um, I have a shot. Not. I mean, this is just practice. So you could just go over, you know, just keep your pencil and just use, use the watercolor over right. it. All right. Um, I just mixed a little, uh, a little burnt sienna with a little ultramarine here. Um, more ultramarine probably, cause I, it makes kind of a nice lavendery type gray. Um, and I'll probably, you know, you look at the buildings, Yes, they're white, but obviously there's a lot of shadow on them. You know, like this guy back in the corner, very strong shadow on him. So I'm just gonna put that in. I'm leaving the I'm leaving the white part of the building. And I always have a paper towel in my hand. I, I just have to. I can't paint without one. Where is my paper towel? <laughs> yeah. um, so I'm just going in there with some of that, you know, that's the, the burnt sienna, shadowy. To me, that's one of the darkest spots on those buildings. And I'm going to go under the roof of that round. If I'm talking too much, you can just tell me to be quiet. 
Well, you're the star of the show. You need to talk. I was just going to say, that's the one we want to hear. <laughs> it's very just... helpful for you to talk out loud because that tells us kind of what you're thinking so we can translate okay. that into what you're doing. So I, personally, okay. I love it. So keep doing okay. it. I didn't realize I did that so much in a plain air event. The woman next to me, she's like, I really enjoyed the conversation you were having with yourself all day. I do that too. <laughs> I think those are bicycles and I didn't realize that they're bushes now. Well, no, I made those bicycles bushes. Oh, you did that, oh good. I did that to avoid getting too fiddly with trying to render bicycles. Thank you, I, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Never know when a good bush comes in handy. In a oh, absolutely. I'm going down the side of that, uh, that clock tower too, because you can see um, definitely one side in shadow there. And this building, I didn't really, I didn't do that whole building off to the side, but I'm gonna put that shadow in underneath the, the roof line. I'm going to keep my umbrellas white like they are. And Luann, you're doing all this wet into dry, is that correct? Or are you um, laying water down first? No, I didn't. I did not water down first. Okay. I usually don't with the urban sketch painting. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Um, you can see on that white building um, behind <laughs> the umbrella is it you know there's a lot of shadow back there too I'm just going to throw that in not so, not so dark, but. I'm going to kind, I'm going to use that buff titanium. I think I'm saying that right. Um, for the ground. Would you, what would you recommend for that if we don't have that? Um, let's see. Maybe, uh, probably a gray. If you have panes or, or um, yeah. any sort of gray you can mix. I just want to get it light um, because then we can go darker for under those umbrellas where you can see they're very specific like um, shadows, very angular looking. There's not a whole lot of color in this, in this sketch. I'm gonna use a little um, burnt sienna, maybe just with a touch of cad maybe for the rooftops. I'm 
Maybe that's a little much. Tone it down a little bit. Now I have, you know, my sky kind of ran into this roof up here. And I'm just going to leave it. Doesn't bother me. Um, also, I'm, I'm putting that uh, sepia along that roof line where the tile, whatever you call them, is. And I'm just letting it run. It's kind of going in wet, wet into wet, but that's all right. Where did you go? Um, put some over here. I really like that sepia color. Is this anybody's first time trying these a watercolor wash or are you all pretty? Yes, me. Okay. Yes, me. I hope you're having fun. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's a little sloppy. That's all right. <laughs> I didn't know that, that we were going to draw the picture at the same time, so I had it pre-drawn. Oh, good for you. I didn't know, so. That's all right. I got to, walk, I got to watch you draw all there. Not, and I'm using really cheap watercolor. Really cheap. I did cheat and make those bushes, so I'm going to make them green. How much time, Anna? Let me tell you. Uh, this we are how much? Fifteen minutes. Okay, fifteen oh. minutes. Yes. Oh man, we got an eternity. <laughs> Could draw the rest of the city. Yeah. Art another one, Chris. <laughs> I'm beating this one up. I mean, uh... <laughs> see the. The fun part of this one is going to be the flowers. You can really go crazy with the flowers. Mm -hmm. 
so um, Luann or, or um, anybody who knows, I, I discovered in trying to put on the watercolor that my, I have one of those, the Duke, and um, I thought I had bought permanent ink because I knew I, the first ink I bought was was not. So I thought I went back and bought permanent and put it in here. And lo and behold, it is not permanent either. So, and they they always tell me in, in the things that I read about using the pen to be careful about the kind of ink that you put in the pen. So is there a permanent ink brand I should be looking for? Chris, do you know the answer to that? You're better at the ink pens than, than me. Oh, he's not there. I do. I'm gonna. I was grabbing my my ink okay, um, okay. bottle. It's a it's a carbon. It's a platinum carbon ink. Is probably the best waterproof ink. It's a. Uh, you can order that online as well. Noodlers is good. What what Luann had had uh, talked about earlier. That's a that's a good ink. What was the name of it? There's a platinum carbon ink, black. I don't know. If, let's see. Um, I'll hold it up to the camera. It's uh, it's backwards, obviously, but you can see the uh, the container. Wait a minute, I gotta find you. Uh, that's what my wife says all the time. Carbon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, okay. carbon, carbon. It's backwards, but it's a it's a platinum carbon ink. So is platinum the how I look for it then, or that's yeah. Yeah, you can just you can uh, you can uh, put that in Amazon and. and uh, oh, I'm going to do it right now. Platinum carbon. See what you got. That Noodlers is good as well. How do you spell that? N o o d l e r s. Okay. It's a fishing term. <laughs> yeah, it my fisherman so. New term. Yeah. Huh. yeah. And um, I think that's one of it. He's got a whale and a fishing pole, something like that. I thought I thought needling was when they got in the water and picked it up with their hand. Yeah, that's when you catch uh catfish. Right. I've actually done that. Oh wow. <laughs> It was pretty crazy. Numerous. So I can get numerous tomorrow and I can have it for Savannah. <laughs> How about that? Okay, we'll go with, we'll go on with that. Oh, $32.99. <laughs> well, okay. Try that platinum carbon. Well, I was looking for it, but let's see. Let me go back up. I think that's where I got mine. Noodlers sometimes, the one I have, sometimes it doesn't, uh, I, I put the paint on too early and it runs, but it kind of gives it a- Oh, yeah? Is it in a little short squatty bottle? Uh. I can grab the box if you want. Mine looks like this. Yeah, that's it. It's a little taller. Yeah. This is the. Uh, what is that brand? What is no, what's amazing, guys, is on this box there is a fish. There's a catfish. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so all the. Oh, so you have nude. <laughs> all right. Okay. So whoever uh, whoever said it was a fishing term wins the jelly bean award of the night. Okay, yay! <laughs> that that would be me. Nice. Ah, <sighs> talk darks. All right, I'm ordering this one. I'm gonna have plenty of ink, except that. Most of it is is uh, water sol soluble. Oh well. I don't think I need to tell you that the flowers do whatever makes you happy on here.
you know, there's also, I don't know if I'll end up doing it, but you know, you can always do your little watercolor, um, you know, the splashes, make nice flower arrangements. Yep. Go wild with. Last 10 minutes. <laughs> Luann, this is Kathleen. I'm going to get going, but this has been just wonderful, and your work is incredible. And for those of you that don't know, Luann is also an incredible pickleball player. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kathleen from Pickleball. I'm glad you could join us. <laughs> yeah, this has been great. And now okay, I'm pretty good. Yeah. Well, yeah. join the group. You would like it. I can tell. I like it already. Look yes. at this. Yeah. Come to a sketch. Okay. Well, I just did. Well, I mean, in person. <laughs> no, I know. I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. And I'm uh, I'm very pleased and I like what I did too. So there you go. Uh, well, usually at the end we share them. So you should wait for a, a few minutes. I, I can't. I told my son I was going to call him in California. So I got to. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I know. And your excuse. All right. <laughs> okay. See you later, Kathleen. Yeah, bye.
We have five more minutes. Not enough. Oh, where's my fountain pen? There it is. <laughs> now I've been talking. One more minute. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to see what y'all did. I'm going to remove the spotlight so we can see everyone's work. Yeah. And um, I can start spotlighting someone that is ready to show their work. I see someone here. Can we do there? Oh, wow. Wow, nice. Oh. <laughs> Who's is that? Leanne. Nice. Yes. <laughs> Leanne. I had a limited palette and a bunch of dried up uh, paint in my um, little uh, Altoids tin, and I went and grabbed it really quick. So it's, I just was working with like three colors. So very nice. Very nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's a nice one. Yeah. 
the quintessential urban sketch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who else is ready? I'll no, show I don't mine. even okay. have watercolor, so. Who is there? I, I saw Adriana. So. I just have pencil. Ah. I spotlight Adriana Delgado. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Nice. There no higher. Yeah. Very good. Very nice. nice. All right. How do you do? How do you do the share? Hold it up. Yeah, I don't know. I don't up, but I don't think anybody saw it. So. <laughs> Very good. Very nice. Looks Thank good. You. Yep. All good. Mine is. Um, was a very good sketch that I, all I do is put magic marker over it because I all of my all of these were dried up. Here's my first one. They, wow, oh, nice. I like that. Very nice. Yeah, yeah I, I, I kind of got lost in the people. I, I, I used too many of them, I think. The multicolor uh, umbrellas were nice. Yeah. Thank you. They very good sketch. Hey, I'll give you my excuses right now. My grandson came in and I had to show him something that he's responsible for this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and I cool. and, and by the way, I do like the maybe this is all wrong, but I do like the <clears throat> the um do bleed and I often use those and then just add a little bit of color to them. Mm -hmm. Really helps, cool. It yeah. helps. Good. That's a secret. That's a good thing. That's what that's yeah. what mine is because they all ran together. Oh, nice. Yeah, oh, that's, that's, that's nice. nice. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> I like the look of that with the running. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I stopped trying to paint. I put a little bit of color here and there, but it just, you know, every time I touched anything, it was like a big mess. So... <laughs> Just a few people really work on that. Oh, good. Yeah, really get the whole thing. <laughs> Got way too many people in mind. <laughs> all right, let's see it, Patrick. Let's see all your people. Well, all you right. can't even tell they're people. Uh oh. Don't turn your camera on so we can Hello, see. Somebody. <laughs> I cannot see Patrick. Oh, yes. Okay. There he is. I found him. Very all right, good. let's see what you got. Uh, nice. nice, nice, yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. very cool. I love it. It's That's not really good. watercolor paper, so it's kind of a, uh, a little too much. Hard. Thank you. No, I didn't do watercolor. I'm just, I'm not a very good sketch. I, mine up again. I, just I, it. I tried, before, but I don't think anybody <laughs> saw it. So. Quiz. I just use multimedia paper. That's all I have. You want me, you want me Hannah? Just, just holler out. Just go ahead. Around. Okay, David, I'm, I'm going to go. Nice. Oh, love it. Yeah. Good. Very nice. It's in more of a close up. I like yeah. It. Yes. Really good. Thank you. No. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't do watercolor. I just did a little bit, and I don't know how to do people. Um, so those of you who know me know that I'm usually like detailed. It takes me forever, uh -huh. but I, I edited so much for me. So very nice. Thank you. Very, very good. Mm -hmm. They all just capture the look of the place. So, you know, yeah. they're all different. Awesome. sketch, <laughs> Joseph. Oh. Me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, you want to see mine? Yeah. Okay, I drew. Hey, hey. Oh, wow. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I like Beautiful. it. Oh, my gosh. That's yeah. Nice. That's pretty. Yeah. I feel lost in the people. Nice color. <laughs> yeah. I like the way it fades under the umbrella, though. That's, that's kind of cool. The lack of detail. Yeah. Uh -huh. nice. Well, kind of the impression of it, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you. You ready for this? Yeah. Oh, wow. Hey. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Can we see that again? That's oh, oh, nice, Karen. Karen. That's nice. That's nice. Thank Very you. Got a nice sense of light, I think. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Who else? Okay. Janet? 
Oh, yeah. That's Bonnie. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> Bonnie, nice. <laughs> Very good. Ah, okay, there we go. Uh, Janet, now I go with Janet. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow, good yeah. Great. I finished my people. <laughs> you didn't need to, though. Yeah. Looks good. Uh huh. I'd say it has atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Great. And Jamie, I can go with Jamie. Christine. Pretty. Yeah. Nice. nice. Closer. Right. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Beautiful. And this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Look at that one. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Oh, it looks okay. so strong. I love the way you did shapes in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Who else? I can go <laughs> on. I, I'm with Grace Allen. Um, Is Chris mm -hmm. Allen? Mm -hmm. ah, nice. <laughs> Karen, hold it up there. Karen. Nice. Very good. Very nice. Very nice. Good. All right, CJ, you need to hold yours up too, buddy. Oh, wow. Oh. Very good. Really, really so nice. So bold. Mm -hmm. yep. Love it. Thank you. Not bad for an architect. <laughs> <laughs> I went with Chris. Oh, all right, here we go. Ooh. Wow. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. That's incredible. incredible. That's, you it looks like you emphasize shadow there, didn't you? Yeah, you know, I, I needed to find some way to pop the umbrella. So I just said Yeah, yeah I mean, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Really good. Nice sense of light. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. Thank you. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. Who else is ready? Who else is ready? I'm going to show show mine. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where is it? There. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's yeah. great. Very nice. Very cool. I gotta tell you, Anna, you gotta lose that iPad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. If I'm if I'm missing someone, please let me. I, I can hear a guitar. Or yeah, I like it. Guitar. Oh, I'm sorry. That's my husband. That's no, it's perfect. fine. I like it. <laughs> Where was he when Luann wasn't speaking? <laughs> <laughs> uh, am I missing someone? So, Chris, what do I do about this? Them? Uh, that's a mark of an artist. So you can <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Very oh, good. Yeah. Nice. Excellent. Very good. Yeah. Uh, very good. Is someone else? Susan, are you there? Or if not, um, everyone can hold their sketch so I can take a picture. All right. Okay. Let me. Yes, you can. Everyone can hold their sketch if you sketch with us, and then, okay, one, two, one, two, three. Very good. Thank you. So, Luan, where where is this place, Luann? It's in Andalusia. Um, it's a, one of the white villages in the up in um, the mountains. Okay. In what country? Spain. 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 Yeah. You need to have a sketch crawl there. Yeah. I yeah. Agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank thanks, you, everyone. everyone. Great job. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye